Hello, and welcome to our, our second video in our series of STAY, put together for us by uh, Challenge Youth Conference, also known as CYC. Uh, we're talking about the, the topic of STAY, and this week's topic is going to be STAY ALIVE. And this week's speaker is going to be none other than Ben Hayes. Ben Hayes is one half of the wonderful duo of Ben and Travis who come and bring so much entertainment for us uh, at the Challenge Youth Conference. Uh, ben is a wonderful preacher of the gospel and I hope that you'll enjoy this lesson today as he speaks to us about something that I think that you'll agree hits very close to home of something that we're going through right now. Please watch this video. Uh, once it is over with, I'll come back and we'll have a little bit of extra discussion talking about some of the things that he went over and also to provide you guys some, to, some discussion things for you to think about on your own at home uh, to kind of follow up as well. So uh, please, I hope that you'll enjoy. Sixteen people, 72 days, high in the Andes Mountains on a glacier after an airplane crash in 1972. Jose Salvador Alvarengo, 438 days adrift in the Pacific Ocean after his boat stopped working, 6,700 miles. Jim Thompson, nine years in a Vietnamese prison survived five of those years without seeing another American. Each of these people, their main focus for a long time was simply staying alive. Other people have had similar situations, but maybe not lasted quite as long. You might remember the World Trade Center disaster. You might think of bombings or other airplane crashes or car crashes that, that don't last for, for years, but maybe last for hours or days, or maybe even weeks. Also, we know aside from the physical struggles that people face, we also know that there are those spiritual times where people have faced difficult emergencies. First Peter chapter five and verse eight reminds us that the devil is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Ephesians chapter six and verse 16 reminds us of the flaming arrows of the evil one that he throws at us. All of those things that we face, what do we do about them? Well, one of the things, if you ask John Leach, who is a military expert, who has dealt with a lot of different disasters through the years and has studied them over and over again, he would tell us that being prepared is one of the main things that you can do. 15% of people really have the mindset of being able to survive in those difficult circumstances. In fact, when they studied the World Trade Center disaster, they found that a lot of people waited around to see what other people were gonna do. Many were going to the bathroom, many were finishing emails. There were others who were putting on their shoes or changing their clothes instead of thinking about how they were going to survive. People who were mentally prepared, people who had thought out what was going to happen, tended to be the people who survived. Have you ever been on a plane and as you were getting ready to go on a trip, you, they go through the instructions, they start telling you what to do in case of emergency, what to do in case the plane goes down? Did you ignore all of the things that they were saying? Did you maybe put your headphones in and do something else? What about when you have tornado drills or when you have uh, drills for any other emergency at school? Do you pay attention? Do you really pay attention to what's going on when they tell you those things? Are you really preparing your mind for them? Again, those are physical struggles. Those are physical battles. But what about spiritual preparedness? Do you really prepare for the difficult times that you're going to face in your Christian walk? Think about all the times that your parents, your teachers, your youth minister, your preacher, your elders, 
all the different people in your life who have tried to prepare you, tried to tell you about things that maybe you should think about, maybe some things that you should do. Have you listened to those things? Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11, Jesus finds himself in the wilderness. He finds himself in a wilderness being attacked, being tempted by Satan. And in each one of those scenarios, in each one of those times, every single thing that was hurled at him, he had a preparation for it. It is written. He said that during the first temptation. He said it during the second temptation. And he said it during the third temptation. Jesus, when he faced Satan, was prepared. When he faced other struggles as he went through his life, he was prepared. The writer of Psalm 119 verse 9 tells us, How shall the young man keep his way pure? He says, By keeping it according to your word. Being ready with what the word of God says. When I was a kid, I used to watch the television show G.I. Joe. At the end of the television show, there was always a little segment where they would teach kids how to either tread water or start a fire or do something else that was some sort of survival technique. At the end of that, they would always say, and now you know, and knowing is half the battle. Being prepared. Whether you're young or whether you're old, being prepared. What about prayer? Will you be prepared to go to God in prayer? Will you be prepared to, to turn to God's Word? Will you be prepared to, to go to the people in your life, the church that might could help you in the struggles that you face? Just simply knowing, just simply understanding where you need to go. This is just the beginning. Your leaders are going to cover some other things. Just simply being prepared is important. But also the Word of God prepares us in many other ways. You might remember that 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3 says that it gives us all that pertains to life and godliness. You also might remember that in 2 Timothy chapter 3, he tells us that he's equipped us for every good work. We can be prepared for what's coming. So start preparing now. Satan is. He's preparing a game plan to try to get you. Are you preparing so that you will be spiritually ready when difficulties come? So as discussed in the video, being prepared mentally and physically, it's a huge factor in being able to survive these types of, of disasters that was, that was talked about in our video. As Christians, you know, we understand that the same thing is true for the things that we face in our lives. And I think you guys will all understand that we are facing a pretty decent sized disaster, so to speak, in our life right now, with our world completely being changed. And I hope that as we have gone into this period of time where we have been at home and had to have been away from each other and, and different things are happening with, with uh, us having to social distance and the things going on with our economy, that hopefully we have prepared enough that we are able to, to deal with this well and survive and stay alive. But also at the same time, guess what? The church is still working. The church is still very much alive in trying to help us all not only be prepared for what's coming maybe tomorrow, but for us to continue to be able to battle through what we're dealing with right now. You know, God never allowed us to have this struggle alone. I love the fact that God set up the church. I love the fact that God decided to give us a group of people who are working together, struggling with one another to lift each other up. So hopefully while you have spent this time at home that you have reached out to your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. I hope that you have received some encouragement from them as well that we can continue to help each other, to pray for each other, to encourage one another to continue to keep going even when things right now don't seem to be going completely great. Um, in the same physical disasters that were mentioned in the video, it seems that rather than mass hysteria during those times, and I know we've seen some of that right now, in most circumstances people actually help one another 
survive. In fact, it seemed like the chances of survival greatly increased when people work together. And I'm glad to see that our congregation and the church is working together to overcome during this difficult time. So I want us to continue to encourage one another and also want us to think about making sure that we keep and maintain the proper focus. It seems that so many people who have endured hardships and have gone through disasters I have had to have a certain mindset in, in, in order to be able to come out on the other side. I want us to think about some of those people that we can read about in the Bible who underwent certain things. Hebrews chapter 11 is full of such amazing people who had such great faith that underwent so many really hard challenges and things in their life, but yet were able to remain faithful to God. The following chapter in Hebrews chapter 12 gives us this, this idea of thinking about all these wonderful witnesses that have gone on before us who have, who have endured and who have remained faithful. And now knowing that people are able to do that, knowing that people are able to overcome obstacles and remain faithful to God, we too now have an opportunity to cast off sin, to, to throw down those shackles and those chains that keep us from, from running our race like we should and focusing on God, focusing on the end goal, our wonderful Savior Jesus Christ who is reigning on high right now with our Father in heaven. There's where our focus lies. Sometimes it's going to be difficult for us to maintain that focus, knowing that there's so many things around us that are not going our way. There's so many things that are around us that are going wrong. There's so many things that are around us that are pulling us and our attention to go different areas and different ways, but our focus must remain on our God. Our focus must remain on Jesus Christ. So with the help of our encouraging brothers and sisters and us keeping our mind right to focus, we ought to be able to overcome our difficult times. Difficult times will come. Difficult times are here. They are inevitable. However, being ready for those struggles and learning from what you do during those struggles are so important for us to do in our lives, to be prepared to encourage one another, to have that proper focus, to stay alive. Here are a couple of discussion things I want to leave with you. After this video is over, those, those discussion things will be on a, on a picture for you to be able to read and be able to, to pause and think about on your own, maybe with your family or, or just to yourself. And so uh, Ben has asked us to think about this. What are some specific struggles that we should prepare for as a group? How can we prepare to help one another through these spiritual tragedies? You may want to think about what you're going through now. You may want to think about something that has happened or something that may happen in the future. What can we do for the next time to be even more prepared and to stay focused and to stay alive? The other thing is, is, is it often helpful to know how others manage tough times? And I would say the answer to that is yes. I want us to take some time to think about how you personally handle tough times. And I want you to write those down. And the next opportunity you get, I want you to share that with a brother or sister in Christ. Because you may have thought of a way to remain positive, to stay alert, to, to stay alive, and, and somebody could use that valuable information. So think of, of all these different things maybe that you use in your own life to be able to overcome these things. Write them down and don't keep them to yourself. Be prepared to share. Once again, thank you so much again for tuning in to our second video in the series of Stay, uh, put together by Challenge Youth Conference. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me as we've had a little bit of discussion about it. I hope that you enjoy these. There are several more to come. Uh, next week, we're going to be talking about to stay humble. Thank you all so much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your week.